Mr. President, President Chad Griffin, members of the board, and to you, my beloved brothers and sisters, thank you so much for inviting me here tonight to share this 20th Annual National Gallery with you. Some of you may know from the introduction that I grew up in rural Alabama. When I was a little boy, it was my job to take care of the chickens. And I fell in love with raising chickens. I know you're smart, you're gifted, but you don't know anything about raising chickens. <laughs> I noticed tonight we had some chicken for dinner. <laughs> but you really don't know anything about raising chickens. When the setting hen was set, have to take the little fresh eggs, mark them with a pencil, and place them under the setting hen, and wait for three long weeks for the little chicks to hatch. I know some of you tonight are saying, John Lewis, why do you mark those fresh eggs with a pencil before you place them under the setting hen? Well, from time to time, another hen would get on that same nest, and there would be some more fresh eggs. Had to be able to tell the fresh eggs from the eggs that were already under the setting hen. Do you follow me? You don't follow me. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> so when the little chicks were hatch, I would fool these setting hen. I would cheat on these setting hens. I would take these little chicks and give them to another hen. I'll put them in a box with a lantern, raise them on their own. When I look back on it, it was not the right thing to do, the moral thing to do, the most loving thing to do, or the most nonviolent thing to do. But I was never quite able to save $18.98 to order the most inexpensive incubator or hatchet from the Cicero Buck store. Most of you too young don't know anything about the Susan Roebuck store or the Susan Roebuck catalog, that big book, that heavy book, that thick book. Some people call it the wish book. I wish I had this. I wish I had that. So I just kept on wishing. As a little boy, I wanted to be a minister. I wanted to preach the gospel. So from time to time, with the help of my brothers and sisters, we would gather all of our chickens together in the chicken yard. And my brothers and sisters and cousins were lying on the outside, but around the chicken yard. And I would start speaking or preaching. And when I look back on it, some of these chickens were by their heads. Some of these chickens would shake their heads. They never quite said amen. But I am convinced that some of those chickens that I preached to in the 40s and the 50s tended to listen to me much better than some of my colleagues listened to me today in the Congress. And some of those chickens were just a little more productive. At least they produce eggs. <laughs> it's been a long time coming as we sit down south. The HRC and I have been trying to make something like this happen for a good while. But as President Lyndon Johnson would say, sometime history and fate come together and actually meet at a single place in a single time in man unending search for freedom. I'm trying to make a little joke here, but actually, I mean this very seriously. You and I are partners. We are part of an ongoing struggle to redeem the soul of America. <laughs> to help people in this country and around the world come to grip with one simple truth, that we are one people. We are one family. We are the human family. When I look out at this beautiful room, see all of you beautiful people. I see everything that truly matters. I see a room full of shining faces filled with the light of hope. And I see hearts filled with the simple dreams we all aspire to. We all want to gaze into the faces of the people we love and be happy. We all want to raise our children well, to garner respect in life, to live and die with dignity and make a meaningful contribution while we are here on this little spaceship we call Earth and leave some kind of legacy behind. We are so much alike in every way that matters. Our similarities far outnumber our differences. 
But somehow we live in a society and a world community that has built a part of its foundation on the tiny surface details that separate us. And we focus so much on separation that leads to division, and division gives rise to hate. In Orlando, June 12, 2016, it was more than a man who pulled the trigger. Not just who pulled the trigger, but what? It was a climate and environment of hate and division. It was hate that pulled the trigger, and 49 real beautiful young men and women died. That must never, ever happen again in America or any part of our planet. In a few hours, their lives and the lives of their families and friends were changed forever. Many more were wounded, physically and scarred mentally. That was a crime against all humanity. And our work in partnership together must be to right that kind of wrong and do all we can to make sure that it will never happen again. I said to you tonight, my brothers and sisters, we must stay in the struggle. We're persistent and insistent. We must also be mindful, even in intensity of the moment, that ours is not a struggle against flesh and blood, but against falsehood and lies. <laughs> against outdated ideas, corrupt tradition, and old laws. We're not locked in a struggle with individuals. We are part of a powerful effort to remind human beings of their own humanity, to create a society based on simple justice that value the dignity and the worth of every human being. We are working to build what Dr. King called the beloved community in this nation and around the world so we can leave a legacy of love, unity, and peace. You had told me in 1965, when we were struggling for voting rights in Alabama, that in 1997, Hawaii would become the first state to offer domestic partnership benefits to same-sex couples. And that's just six years later, in 2003, Massachusetts would become the first state to legalize same-sex marriage. I would have said, you're crazy, you're out of your mind, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and in 2003, if you had told me that just 12 years later, in 2015, the United States Supreme Court, including some of the most conservative justices in modern history, would say our Constitution guaranteeing, guarantee the right of same-sex marriage to couples, I would have questioned whether you were sane. <laughs> you did, you did it, you did it, you did that. We made that seem impossible, was seen impossible a reality by advocating the unity of all humanity. You made it plain to young people who then talked to their parents and grandparents and explained that those who are lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender or not others. We are all part of them. They are our mothers and our fathers, our sisters and our brothers, our relatives, our friends, our neighbors and our colleagues. They're known to us. They are our friends. They're friends of ours who have had to hide the way they live and the way they love. That's not right. That's not fair. That's not just. I've said over and over again, when you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have to stand up, speak up, and speak out, and find a way to get in the way and to get in trouble, good trouble, necessary trouble. <laughs> Marriage equality was a critical step, but the struggle is not over. 
There are forces in America today who want to take us back, but we come too far and we made too much progress and we are not going back, we are going forward. It is still possible to be denied housing, to be fired from your job, or denied service in this country just because of sexual orientation. There's still great work to be done. And it's up to each one of us. I just want to talk to you for a moment. Just for one moment. And I'll be finished. I know it's been a long evening. But let me tell you, this election presents an important challenge, and we must not fail in our response to it. As a group who understand the power of the vote, I must tell you as one who gave a little blood on that bridge in Selma, the vote is pressure, almost sacred, and we must get out there and vote in this election, and vote like we never, ever voted before. I don't want to go back. I know you don't want to go back. We want to go forward. We must show the other side that we have the power to give and we have the power to take. We must continue to move forward. When you have a man like Donald Trump, who is saying President Putin is more of a leader than our own President Barack Obama, we know we have work to do. I have said from time to time, you may not respect a man, but you should respect the office of president. So tonight, you are not doing that for your express admiration for a sworn enemy of this nation. The choice is very clear. I don't need to read another story, or listen to another news report. I follow every election since the election of President Kennedy, and have met with every president since President Kennedy. This is the worst. I tell you, Donald Trump is not fit to be president of the United States. We need, to, we need to run, we need to run, not walk to the polls, and do all we can between now and November the 8th. There's no tomorrow. We must do it. Our lives depend on it. Don't allow, please don't allow perfection to be the enemy of the good. We must do all we can to make sure that this man does not end up in the White House. All their friends of mine talking about, well, if it happened, I'm going to Canada. I want to stay here. And I want all of us to be committed and dedicated to the point that we are going to fight the good fight, that you may get weary, you may fall down, but you must get up and continue to fight. I got arrested and went to jail for the time during the 60s. Beaten, left bloody, unconscious, but I got up and I never gave up. You must not give up. So let me say to each one of you, as member of HRC, the leadership, my friend, and my brother, Chad Griffin, members of the board, thank you for all that you do. But I tell you, we got to roll up our sleeves and do what we must do. We can create the beloved community, a society with peace in itself. 
where no one but no one is discriminated against because of sexual orientation. And when you leave from this place, go out and be happy. I don't know how many of you saw me dancing to the happy song a few years ago. <laughs> Just be happy. Enjoy life. Stay in the struggle. Never become bitter. Never become hostile. And never hate, for hate is too heavy a burden to bear. Love everybody the way of love. Have a great evening and enjoy yourself. Thank you very, very much.